I mean, it starts off. I think everyone last week was talking about the energy that came from, you know, you know that spark in the offense. Yeah. Is that a spark and the energy that you saw continued in the practice this week? It's been a good week, yeah, for sure. Um, guys on offense, you know, responded to success and, and the process of having success. And so, you know, what you don't want to be is somebody who can do it one time. Like, you want to repeat the process. And, you know, Duke's defense is really good. So the challenge um, changes week to week. And playing against this front, the 90 linemen they rotate, you know, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a physical game. So we prepared ourselves for that. Um, the guys understand, you know, the, the energy and the togetherness is just as critical. You know, it's 11 men doing their job together, consecutive plays over and over and over, and that's how you have success. And knowing that they're going to make plays too, it's a good football team we're playing. But uh, sticking together and making more than they do. Along those lines, you haven't faced many teams where they move around a Dwayne Carter from end to tackle to yeah. different positions. How do you kind of handle that as an offensive line group? Uh, Louisville did that, the number nine, so we have seen it. And we see it in practice every day with Davin. And so it's nothing new. I mean, you have to know your matchups in football. Uh, I don't care what you're playing, offense, defense. You, you know who's on you or against you and what their skill sets are. That's part of the game. Uh, it is a team game, but within the play, there's a lot of one-on-ones that take place. And as an offensive lineman, uh, to answer your question, you need to know who you're blocking. You know, is it the guy that's a more of a power bull rush guy or a guy that can get on your edges? And so we have to be aware of that. He's a great player. So wherever he lines up, that guy over him is going to have to compete and understand what that guy's strengths are as a player. Regardless of who starts at quarterback, they have some great wide receivers over there with Jalen Calhoun and, and Jordan Moore. Um, what, what do you see from, from those two uh, when you look at them on tape? How, how talented are they? How much of a problem do they have? Yeah, they're playing at a high level, um, really their whole offense. You know, they're very balanced. Um, they do a nice job spreading the ball around to different people. Um, those two receivers have been consistently productive for a long period of time. And so, you know, they're confident. They understand the system. There's there was really good timing with the quarterback, and so that'll be the biggest thing. Anytime you have a new guy behind center, is that same chemistry there, and hopefully we can disrupt that. You guys, um, I believe, went three and zero against in-state teams last year, and uh, so is there a little bit of an excitement, a little extra motivation to continue that streak? Yeah, we take a lot of uh, in-house pride uh, in winning these games. Obviously, every game. But the in-state games, there's a lot of things that are meaningful in that, you know, particularly for our players that grew up in the state. Uh, and this game's unique because we haven't played there. No one on our team has played in their stadium. So it's a one-time thing for a lot of our guys, particularly the older players, you know that won't get another shot over there at their stadium. Yeah, so last year undefeated in the state, it was meaningful. Um, we'd love to continue that trend, and obviously we know we have to earn that. You think talked about wanting to see the big game one to game two jump from MJ this week. You know, what have you seen from him in practice? Really the same stuff we saw last week. I mean, he prepared well. He's prepared well all year. And uh, he took to heart, you know, the conversation he and I had in the preseason that at any minute, you're one play away from running this football team, whether it's by injury or something else. And the day that you don't prepare that way is probably the day you play and then you're mad at yourself, right? So he did that. I mean, he went into every practice like he was a starter to his credit. And uh, last week he prepared well. And I think, you know, first quarter obviously had his bumps and, and was able to push through that. So I think that was good, you know, to see him respond to adversity and now understand the team saw that too, the grit that he carries, not just an energy or a spark, but, you know, how resilient he is. There's been some times in the past where you've been vocal that, the special teams unit has to win that that category. Duke struggled against Notre Dame and special teams right. in, in several different ways. Is this one of those games where it could be an advantage of seven to ten points? Yeah, I mean, the last two times I've coached against Duke, there's been touchdowns on the special teams. You know, there were blocked punts here on both sides. Max uh, Fisher. Huh? Max Fisher had a touchdown. Yeah, and then over there when we lost to him my first year, they had a return for a touchdown. So special teams will carry the weight for either team, depending on who does it better. And uh, that's emphasized here every week, but obviously there's a history in that in this matchup. You know, Jalen Coit, you know, he just continues to put together those great games. Yeah. That confidence you saw building just continuing to grow? Consistent, um, understands, you know, the spacing and, and the flight of the football and, and how much time he's going to have because of the flight of the ball. 
last week's kicker is different than this week's kicker. So you have to look at, you know, hang time and, and direction and our plan, you know, when to, when to be a little riskier and do the out kick is coverage, is the ball low uh, or did he hang it up there and let's just get to the next play, you know. So I think he's just getting more and more confident as a returner and the guys are uh, on both of our return units are blocking hard for the guys that are returning the ball and we see that in the stats. Coach and I have talked about being able to use Brennan's skills in different ways on the field now. You know, are you excited to see that? It seemed like you tried that, you know, last week just didn't work. You know, kind of excited to see it. Even yeah, I mean, it was unfortunate. The second play he had, Delbert was uncovered in the end zone and he couldn't get to him because of the protection. So, Brennan's a good player and there's things that he brings to the offense that allow us to utilize those skill sets. Uh, it also allows us to protect the other quarterback in some of those things. You don't want to just not have certain plays. Uh, we understand what MJ's strengths are and what Brennan's strengths are, and whether we use them or not will depend on the situation. But whoever's behind the center, like I said last week, the 10 guys in there with them have to operate. They have to play for each other, and we can't have a breakdown. You know, on that play, Belton had a breakdown, and that would have been a touchdown. You know, so I think we're going to see how this thing evolves over time, but there's a lot that we can do with both those guys. How's the safety room uh, adopted the uh, next man up mentality <laughs> with uh, yeah. Minja Keen? Last out. man available mentality. <laughs> it is. Like, well, we're down to nothing back there, so it's scary, is what it is. Uh, those kids are amazing, you know, what they're doing, playing multiple positions and cross training the nickels and the safeties to play all three spots. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're down there with. Uh, a lot different look than we had when camp started where we were really four deep um, at safety and we're barely two deep now and so those kids will hang together and you know we just you know need the good lord to put a blanket on our safeties this week and keep them safe so we can get to the bye week and heal them up a little bit and get ready for the stretch uh, coach and i mentioned uh challenging offensive players besides like you know kc to, to get out there and make plays and to elevate that step what are those conversations like as a coaching staff when you, you challenge people midway through the season that, hey, you all need to take that next step as players? Yeah, and I think, you know, when they start seeing uh, the accolades start coming in for these guys, right, and, and two-time rookie of the week, um, whatever his PFF grade was, top in the country, like, hey, you want to keep this up? Then here's what you got to do. You got to be able to take care of your body. You got to live in the training room. You got to, or you're going to wear out, you know, and so, yeah, it's, the way we challenge guys is in a constructive way, not in a demeaning way. Sometimes there's some sarcasm for fun, but I think, you know, these guys want to be good and sometimes they need to learn this isn't high school, you know, the level of competition, the, the, the contact speed that you're playing against, you know, your body can break down if you don't really, really take care of it. How have you seen the other you know, receivers in that room kind of try to step up and kind of get to his yeah. level that he's playing? I'll tell you what, man, we had a great practice today at receiver. I was so impressed with the way they ran and caught the football. Terrell Timmons and Anthony Smith, um, two guys that you know have practiced really good the last couple of weeks. And I think that there's just um, kind of a, oh my gosh, look at this guy make plays. You know, I want to make plays. You know, well, look at how he's practicing. Well, maybe I should practice a certain way. And then it starts to get contagious in there. And, that's starting to happen, you know, and, I, and I, like I said from the beginning, this offense is in year one. It's growing, it's evolving, it's not where it's going to be. It's getting closer and closer as we go and start to identify skill sets. And so I know people want things now, now, you know, so do we, but that's not reality. It takes time sometimes to figure out what you're going to have and, and how to do it and deal with the injury piece and had a lot of those to deal with throughout the year. So it's exciting to see the growth. Um, and hopefully you'll see that, you know, in the game on Saturday night.